All right, all right, folks. This is Founder Lay Rune with Fantasy Grounds College. Today we're going to continue our Laws of Mind of Fendelver series. We're going to convert Gundar Rockseeker into a player character. Uh, one of the community members, Enrius, in our Fantasy Grounds College community, along with a patron supporter, had requested that maybe I should try to make him into a sidekick, which I had considered, but I wasn't sure about it. But I think he has a good idea. He's on to something. So in order to do that, you need to make your assets and you have to have the, the or you should have the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything book loaded. Uh, the player side is four players, but if you load the actual book, you'll get two groups. You get one for players and then one for the game master. To create sidekicks and you have three choices you have an expert you have a spellcaster and then you have a warrior i thought of making him an expert but then again maybe a warrior would be more fitting so i'm going to pull up his npc stat block so again i have tasha's books loaded in order to make a player character version of a sidekick so i'm going to go ahead and close that go to my story entries that i had up here and these are kind of like my notes and my lore and then I'm just going to kick over to the Rock Seeker Brothers. Here's an image that I made for the actual character. So when we build him, I'll link this photo somewhere. Um, I've already kind of done it in the story here. And then there's Thardrin here. And then there's the NPC versions of them. So I'm going to get uh, also bring up uh, Gundren's uh, picture here for or his NPC stat block. So let's see what we got here. So I'm going to go to NPCs. And I do have Lost Mind of Fandelver loaded. And I'm going to click on NPCs, see if I need to filter it. No, not yet. But I do want to note I have a thing called NPCs Lost Mind of Fandelver for the actual module. But then I actually made my own group, I believe, in here. There's the Fellowship of Fandelin is a, uh, a, uh, a sidekick adventure, you could say. And then there's something I call token test, which I don't know what that was for, but anyhow, um, and then there's some other folders in here, but nonetheless, I'm going to take a look at looking for him in particular. So let's go with Gundren. I'm sure there's a few versions of him. Let me uh, select all. There we go. So there's the one from Lost Mine. Here's the copy that I made earlier. So I'm going to open that up. And it says he's a me uh, medium human al alignment any. And there's really nothing on here except for just some notes here. They made him very, very generic. So he doesn't even have any of his dwarven abilities or anything. So this is kind of crazy. But this would be, uh, you know, this is a generic NPC. It said he's unarmed here, so we can kind of go with that when we build this character. We don't have to give him martial weapons, but if he has a pick, he might be able to use that as a weapon. And then, um, and he can improvise, so we'll, we'll probably add something like that. And not to mention, let's see, the, the warrior at first level, they get a plus two proficiency. Uh, he gets a little bit more of a martial role, which is good. So we we'll probably will make him a sidekick. And then for his NPC stat block, let me go back to NPCs. Let's see. Okay, so for the NPC stat block, I want to look at the Lost Mine one here, make sure that's the right one. Yeah, see, they didn't do anything for this. The third-party content that I picked up on the DM skill, they actually gave him a little bit more stat blocks and stuff, and they kind of made him more like a... Uh, a rogue, I guess, because he has some of the roguish type features. He has his resilience. He's a natural explorer. So I think um, he's kind of more like an expert than he is anything else, but we'll see. He's got thieves tools and perception as his skills, which I think is okay. And then on the other tab, it talks about different things that he gets for going beyond first level, which is basically like the sidekicks. So I kind of like that. So I'm going to use the sidekick that comes with uh, the sidekicks of Fandelver, which is on the DMs Guild. I'll put that in our links later. Um, in my library, there is a 
supplement here that I've loaded that's in Fantasy Grounds format. So there's there's the Fellowship of Fandolin, and then there's Sidekicks of Fandolin. So those were made by DMs Guild people, which I'm grateful that they've done this. Also, there's the loot that goes with Lost Minus. So if you're a Game Master and you're using this product and you don't feel like making a bunch of uh, extra parcels to give out to your party, if you get this module, you'll have parcels and you'll have a parcel for every creature and every NPC in the story, which is really cool. Just in case you don't like the treasure they give out, or and in some cases, like the goblins won't have treasure. But if you actually use this product, it'll have at least their gear on here, even if it doesn't have coins. I myself would add a few copper. I think that would make sense that they, that a group of them would have a few on them. But anyway, so that's the, some of the additional products that I... Um, are showcasing on here a little bit. So the Fellowship gets into some pre-generated characters, which is cool because they're different levels. And I think they go up to level three. Nope, level four, five. Wow. Yeah, they, they, they did a lot of work. So each character in this has five levels. So if you want to play these characters as um, different levels to start with, you can add these. They're already built pretty much. They're pre-generated. So that's really handy, whoever made that. And then you have their own parcels for Sildar. So this is like when you go get his stuff back because he's beaten up and just about left for dead. They took his gear from him, so that this this is his gear, his actual stuff. So you can actually drag and drop this on his character sheet if he didn't have anything else, and it would populate, and the gold too. So, yeah, that's pretty pretty cool. So there's a lot of cool tools out there to use, but let's uh, stick to this. So I'm going to actually use this as a model instead of the regular generic one that comes with the Lost Mine, which is really just a commoner with the name of a dwarf and nothing else. So I'm going to make a copy of this. So this was from the Sidekicks of Fandelver, and it basically is built like a sidekick, which we're going to do today. Gonna kind of do our own version and it even gives you some of the stats for that which is really cool so i'm going to go ahead and make a copy of it and now i can do whatever i want with it so this is the one i want to use and then i'm going to replace the token because i want to use my own i don't want to steal someone else's and this token isn't bad i mean it's looks pretty good from what i can tell but i wanted to show you again how to add assets to your folder that way when you're actually using Lost Mine or any other campaign setting and you want to know how to do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to pick a different portrait and a different token for him. So instead of using the one with the NPC that they provide in one of the modules, and in the original Lost Mine, it's just a token. I mean, a letter token. It's not even art. So I went ahead and made these ahead of time so it wouldn't take up too much time like I did last time with Sildar. So I have a couple of these in my my folder here that I've already built. And I use that program the or the online tool called uh, Roll Advantage Token Stamp to build these. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll put that in the description too if you haven't seen these shows before. So if you go to Assets, you have your campaign level folder, which is only for this campaign. And then you have your data level, which is for all of your campaigns and this one. So if I want to add an image, which I will in this case, because this is going to be the token, not the portrait. So if I go into this, it's not going to um, give me to the right folder because these are just for like maps and handouts. And speaking of handouts, this is the one I made for this particular video. And I actually made it part of my background. So you can create a image decal for your background or you can add it to your image records. I've already done that. So in my maps and images area, and if I go to my group that I made for this actual show, um, it will show Hall Winter and Rock Seekers Fall. That's what I call this. And then here's uh, Gundren. He's already, he's already a part of the campaign. But that's how you would do that. And but Sildar Rock Seeker, but then I have a rock right here, and that ironic. And then I just have his logo and you know some art here. So that's to kind of give you a little bit of a feel for it, kind of get make it a little bit more immersive. So I made one for for Sildar last time, and then I made like a poster version, which is for the whole series. So I kind of put two horses here, the ones that get uh, shot down and slain with arrows, unfortunately. 
and then I got the two heroes here side by side in a forest looking north. Over here on the right where the sun is, is going down, that's the uh, Sword Coast. And then the straight ahead would be heading into the woods, into uh, getting closer to Fanel. And this is right before they they make that major cut there. They're starting to get on the Tribor Trail. And this is right before the goblins uh, ambush them and attack them. The sun's going down, it's just starting to get dark, and that's a perfect time for an ambush. Because the light plays tricks on your eyes, because it's got your your pupils dilated down low for the darkness of the ambience of the, the forest. But then when you look around and you see all this light reflecting off things, it, clo it it'll close and open your, your uh, pupils, which, make, which really makes it hard to see. So that's uh, why the goblins choose that time to attack, because it's uh, optimal for them. Because they're coming from a place of darkness. So that is basically uh, the poster thing I made for it, and that's part of the series thing but uh so now that i've done the artwork let's go to portraits and i don't really have a uh a portraits folder for this campaign but i do have one for the entire um fantasy ground so there's one called custom made and that's where i put my custom made tokens at so if i go into my um folder where i save this stuff i'm gonna put this in here but you have to do it at the folder level. You can't just drag it into the assets view. So you have to click on folder and then custom made portraits. And now I'm going to take the other folder where I had sit. This is my downloads folder. And I'm going to drag and drop this uh, Gundren into this folder here. So this over, this over here is where I made him. And then I'm going to drag this. I left the original background and I just took a headshot kind of like we did with Gundren here. Are with Sildar. So that's now going to be available when I make my character, and it's in the portrait area. Now for the token over here on the left, it's a pog. I'm going to go ahead. I removed the background from that. I put my, I think I put my own background in there, and I need to change the tokens up here in the assets. And then I have a campaign folder with NPCs and such. So if, if you were going to use this, so these are all the tokens that I've been working with. And I might pick some nice 3D ones, but for right now I just have the pogs for the for the characters. So I have to pick. I have to go through a bunch of tokens just to figure out which ones I want. It'll take me all. That'll take me longer than this whole show, because I'm so picky and I have to have everything just right. So this is, uh, you know, I want something that kind of matches. I don't want just anything. And then, um, you know, it may not be perfect, but it, I want it to be close to perfect. So let's see. So now that I have this open, I'm just going to click on folder. And that brings up the NPC folder or the subfolder. And then I'm going to take the other folder that I had open, my downloads folder. And I'm going to find the NPCs one and I'll just drag and drop this over here. Now that I've done that, now it is in the Fantasy Grounds folder along with my other tokens. However, it won't show up here unless you hit the refresh. Once you hit the f the folder, it'll refresh the assets. Now I have a token to assign to Gundred. So when you pick a portrait, it is going to assign this as your default token. So if I double click on portraits, go to data, and then I'm going to go to my custom made folder here. Gundren is in here. This is here. So if I double click. It will put Gundren as the portrait and also the token. But if you want a token on top of just a, you know, just your portrait photo, you can also drag and drop a separate token on there. So you have a square profile and then you have the round token. So now when I add this to the combat tracker or the party sheet, I will see this one instead of that one. So in this case, it doesn't make a lot of difference, but I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop him on here. And this is the token that that shows up here for that. So that's how this uh, this works. I'm going to put my pointer back up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Forgot to do that for you. Makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And then I, I'm going to. This is called pointer focus. I use this to help assist in you know doing these shows. So I'm going to bring the opacity down up a little bit so you guys can see that pink at a pinkish hot pink color. That should work. And that way, when I'm pointing at things, it's a little easier to see. So I was changing the portrait photo. And when you do that, your portrait becomes your default token. 
However, if you have a different token that you want to associate with this character, you can do that, and that's what I've done. Now, if you export this character or you import it, it's not going to save this this dot this uh, any of this uh, artwork. So you have to reassociate these. You have to rechoose them if you migrate to different campaigns. Unless it's within Fantasy Grounds, it might save it there. But if you send it to someone else's desktop, you might have to send these little pieces of art to them. And these photos do not need to be very big. You want them square, but you, you don't need them big. I think any more than 200 by 200 pixels for dimensions is way too big. Uh, some people use a picture that's almost bigger than a screen just to show their portrait in a little 100 by 100 block. So you want to make these tokens not too big. So that's the token part of it. I'm not going to adjust the ability scores, even though that's what we normally do when we build characters. Now, I want to. Um, I know that uh, Gundren is a hill dwarf, and he's skilled in mining and such. So one of the features he'll get as a dwarf is to have the stone cunning. So I'm going to make his skills and abilities a little bit more rounded to what he might do in real life instead of just making whatever. So that that's going to be something that I will choose as I go. But I also will look at the, the stat block example which I thought was was incredible. So let me go to that NPCs again. And here's the Gundren I wanted to use, which is out of the other product. And then from my story entry, um, since I have a copy of this now, I'm gonna take and grab and drag and drop this into this area so I have an easy shortcut to it when I'm using this material again later on. And then I have this little note section here and then this will not rely on the fact that I have made a copy. I have, I'll have i have my own group and everything. So this is pretty cool to have that. And then I have his two brothers detailed here, which they will for sure be sidekicks. So maybe I will make him a PC, and then the other two brothers, I'll make them sidekicks. That might be better, because I don't know for sure. But the first level sidekick isn't going to be much different than a first level uh, warrior. So maybe I will just make him a sidekick. I'm pretty undecided. <laughs> undecided, get it? Okay, so background. Let's take a look at the backgrounds and see if anything fits. So if we come over here to backgrounds, that's the second thing we do besides the uh, the ability scores. So we can make him a guild artisan, which kind of makes sense. Or he could be a... Let's see, not an acolyte, maybe a merchant, a guild merchant, because he's kind of shrewd. And then, of course, you have Outlander and, you know, Spy and Urchin and those things. And then um, I didn't load up the um, Sword Coast Adventures guide. So if you go to your library, I don't think I loaded the Sword Coast supplement. So let me do that. So I'm going to go to modules, and I'm going to search for sword. And I'm just going to load up the adventures guide for the actual players. And that'll give me more options in the backgrounds. There we go. All right, so we have Clan Crafter. I think that would be a cool thing. Yeah, we'll just make him. He gets history and insight, and he gets artisan tools. He speaks uh, Dwarvish or one other if, if you already speak Dwarvish, which he does. So we'll, we'll pick another language. And then he gets respect from the stout folk. So most dwarves uh, like him and such. I think that's a pretty good background. Or you can make him the clan crafter too. Or a guild artisan. So I think the clan crafter fits him very well. But you could also do one of these others too. But I think that one fits pretty well. So clan crafter it is from the Sword Coast Adventures guide. And once I add that, it will add any of the additional languages or or anything that's associated with that. So if you add something like that, it will add history, insight. It says one artisan tools, and it says dwarvish, and then pick another if you already speak, speak dwarvish. So if you go to the abilities tab, it says dwarvish, and then I'm going to have course common. And those would be my two languages. And then if I get another language, that'll be there. Because I'll get Dwarven again, so I have to pick one other language anyway. So 
I think I'm going to just do like Elvish or half. Oh, giant. There we go. He can speak, uh, or Goblin actually would be better. So he can speak Goblin because he, he hates them. So he speaks the language of his enemies. Uh, he gets one type of artisan tool, so probably uh, Mason's tools. Which makes sense because he's a rock seeker. He works with stone a lot. So he might have some masonry skill. And that is his background. And then anything that comes with his background, you can code it in the back if you need to. If it's possible or if it makes sense. He also got the gear from it. So he got the chisel, uh, traveler's clothes, a gem or 10 gold, and a little pouch. So if I go to the library, I have the, a module loaded up for Rob2E coding effects. And I have another plugin that automatically adds a lot of the assets. So it speeds these things up. But you have the background and class equipment bundles. Those are in parcels. So if I open up parcels and I pick a class of being a fighter-like thing, then what I have to do is come down here and go to parcels. And then I will look for the background and class equipment. And then he has one coming from his clan crafter thing, but it's already been done, so I don't have to do it. And then he gets one from his actual class, which I'll wait until I pick the class. Maybe it'll do it automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and pick his race. So I was kind of getting ahead of myself. So just wanted to let you know what I have equipped, why it's able to populate so fast. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up the, let's see, we want races. And then I'm going to pick Dwarf, just the one from the Player's Handbook. Drag and drop it on here. And it will ask me what type of Dwarf and what skills. So in this case, Gundren has been confirmed to be a Hill Dwarf. So I'll go ahead and click that. And then he gets... Uh, plus one to wisdom, and then he's got dwarven toughness. His size, dark vision, tool proficiencies were added. So if I'm going to go back to his ability score, see so he's got common and dwarvish twice, so I'm going to go ahead and speak elvish. There we go. So he knows quite a bit of languages, which is good. And if you have to, you can get rid of Goblin if there's too many. So I might do that. There we go. You shouldn't have more than three languages, regardless. Okay, so there's his languages. Common, Dwarven, Elvish. And then his stuff is starting to fill in for his background and his race. And then his abilities come in. Like, he has combat training, which is why I'm going to make him a warrior. Could have made him a healer, but he gets proficiency with... Light hammer, war hammer, hand axe, and battle axe. So if he doesn't normally get those, you have to list those manually. So I'll leave that there. Let's see, what else are we gonna do? So we got he's got his two skills from his background. So we'll see what his class gives him. Hopefully it's something related. So let's go ahead and grab his class, which we're, we we said it was gonna be a sidekick, and I think that might still be a thing, so if I go to Warrior, he's going to get some stuff. So I'll drag and drop that in here instead of the Fighter class. And now it's going to ask me for two separate skills. So I don't want to pick the ones I already have. So as a Fighter, let's see, he's got History and Insight. Let's give him Perception and maybe Survival or... Athletics or Intimidation? And eh, I think Survival would be better for him. Yep. Or Persuasion. I think Persuasion because he's kind of a businessman. And he doesn't have a... Probably not going to have a high charisma. So anything he can get to help him with that. So that that's that. So we now we have those. And then I'm going to add his proficiencies for his tools up here. So he's going to have Smith's tools and Mason's tools. So I'm going to go ahead and put Mason's tools... And his smith tools, which is his next thing I'm going to pick for him. This comes from his background, and then the other one comes from his race. So he's got quite the dwarven... Uh, 
thing here. So his Mason's tools are going to be based off of Wisdom, and so are his Smith tools. Sleight of hand is Dex. So these are kind of be Wisdom type based things. You can change what they're based on, but that's what I'm choosing. And then his abilities for his tool proficiency, I'm going to put a note here that says, uh, let's see, these are Smith's tools. So he probably knew the the masonry ones first, but either way, he's got those two tools on his side. He can have heavy armor and weapons uh, because of his thing, so he's or his race, so that's good, and because he's also more of a warrior type. And that's pretty much what he's going to get. I mean, he doesn't get a lot of the other fighter stuff, but that's okay because he's just a sidekick. Um, so those are his two proficiency bonuses. And it says you gain uh, one in the following saving throw of your choice. So dex, strength, or con. So I would, in addition, you gain proficiency in two skills, which he did. And then he gets proficiency with all armor. And if humanoid has a simple or martial weapon in its stat block, it gains proficiency with shields and all simple and martial weapons. So simple, martial, heavy armor, shield. So it's all there. So I just need to pick one of his saving throws. So I think I'm going to do con. That makes the sense overall. So I just click that and that gives him his uh, proficiency in the saving throw against constitution checks. I could have put it in strength, but yeah. And now I'm going to look at his stat block to see kind of where they went with that. Just get a better idea. And if he's going to go up to level 2, he needs 300 XP for rules as written. He may not have any XP right now, but that's what he will get if he goes to second level. He gets to be 300. Um, he only gets a D4 for hit points. So thank God he's a Hill Dwarf because he's going to get a con bonus plus an extra one for his level. So he has six hit points. I want to look at the uh, NPC stat block here and see what it looks like. So if I go back to my notes here, let's check, it, check out the uh, NPC so yeah, they didn't do a whole lot different than I did. It's 12 and then 11 wisdom. So yeah, that's exactly what he has right now. And then he has passive perception of 14. Why is that? So his passive perception is only 12 here. So he gets two from his proficiency bonus. And he should get... Let's, oh, we... Yeah, he should have four. I don't understand. Well, at least he gets, you know... From his wisdom, he doesn't get anything, so that's why. And they gave him plus four. Yeah, so I don't know what how that happened, but he should have 12. Um, and then he gets, uh, well, he has 11, and then he gets the plus two from his proficiency bonus. So it shouldn't be any more than 13, to be honest, but anyways. But you can change that if you want to. You can... You can you know, make adjustments if you want. I'll just leave it at that. I think that's good enough. Here, he only knows common and dwarvish. So if I go to his abilities tab, I can get rid of the elvish. I might just put goblin back there because I think that would be kind of cool for him to know that instead of elvish. Uh, let's see. He's got, yep, these are his proficiencies. He can't become lost as a natural explorer. And he has dwarven resilience or dwarven toughness. Stone cunning. Okay. So if I go to his actions tab, all this stuff is already added here. His resistance, his stone cunning, and then all his standard actions, which are just things he can do instead of attacking. And he doesn't really have any weapons, but I'm going to give him a couple things. So let's look at his uh, inventory. And yeah, it wasn't added automatically because he's not a fighter. So that's good, because I don't want to load him up with a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to give him a backpack and some mining stuff. So let's go to the items. And we're done leveling up. That's, that's as far as he's going to go up in levels. And let's go ahead and grab him a backpack. And right now it says empty. But... Uh, I'm going to fix that because we're not going to have it empty for long. 
Uh, let's see. I want the pitons or pythons or whatever you want to call them. So there's those. And we'll give him 10 of those. And then he's going to have a little hammer, like a tool. Yeah, so he's going to have like just a regular little hammer. So, and he can pick up a war hammer or a battle axe. He has no problem with that. He just doesn't carry him with him. So there's his uh, little hammer for hammering stuff in. Let's go with a pick. The miner's pick is right here. Uh, let's see if that becomes a weapon at all. See, it doesn't weaponize it, so we might have to use one of these war picks and then modify it. So this is a, a, a pick, and this is really just an item. So if you wanted to make this an actual weapon, you could take this and drag and drop it in here and say it's a miner's pick. So let's look at the war pick. So the war pick does 1d8, so I think that a miner's pick if you use it as a weapon, would only be probably like a 1d6. So right now it says it's an adventuring gear, and it's a standard item. But if you change this to weapons, it changes these fields. So I'm going to put the damage as 1d6. And there's no bonus or anything. The weight might just be a pound or two over, so I'll make it 12 pounds. And let's take a look at the war pick. So I'm going to drag and drop this. And let's crack that open and see what the war pick has for its properties. Yeah, so this would be considered a martial weapon, just like that is. So he can wield it. So the war pick's a little lighter than the miner's pick, so I think I'll leave that at 10 then. This is worth 5 gold. This one is worth 2, so I'll probably make it worth 4. This is not as beefy or robust as the war pick. So weapon, weapon, 1d6, piercing. And it doesn't have any properties, so we'll just leave it at that. So that's a war pick, uh, or a regular miner's pick that's been modified into a weapon. Now you can also make this on your character sheet, but I just went ahead and cracked one of these open, just so the item is, is there. And then I'm going to put in parentheses melee. Just so that I know which one is which. So there's the melee based one. So let me go to his inventory. And I'm going to remove this regular one, because this is just a tool. The one I'm putting on his his stat block is can be used as a tool or a weapon, so I guess it's kind of versatile in that way. And now that I've added that, it should yeah, see it's added the weapon up here as a uh, a weapon, and he only gets you know it's not that powerful, so yeah, it looks right. So th there's no craziness to it, but we kind of turned it into like a, a weapon that we can use. Now what I'm going to do is take and change this over to the rest of this area. Make sure I got all this correct. Yes. Now I'm going to put his tools in there. And it said that he was lawful good. I think so. So I'll put that on here. He's male. Probably looks like he's about, you know, in his 40s or something like that. So in Dwarven years, I'm going to make him 90. It's not too old yet. And he's going to be 4 foot 4 inches. And he's going to be about 188 pounds. Or 190 pounds. We'll get all that other stuff later for his lore. But that's basically what he has here. Is he has some of the abilities of the fighter, but not a lot. And being that he has the martial role... He gains plus two on all attack rolls if he's an attacker or if he's a defender he can use his reaction to impose disadvantage so i think i'm going to make him the defender role as opposed to an attacker i don't see him being as militant 
So with the defender roll, he gets basically to impose disadvantage. So what we could do is go to the Rob 2E spell coding effects. And these are will be in class features. And he already has something that's coded for that. So there's a fighting style. And it would be under the fighter. So if you click on source, if you have the module loaded, and go to fighter, it should have fighting style defender, which is a one of the fighting styles for like a weapon master. So let me see. Fighter. Yeah, so there's fighting style protection right here. And that does exactly what, what we want. So I'll drag and drop that into his... his uh, Let's see what section is this this will be in his features or in one of the groups down here so and let's go with uh yeah so we'll we'll go into the um he'll make have a like a fighter section so i'm going to create a new group by clicking on the edit button on the bottom right corner and i'm going to click on a a uh, star here which will make a new group and then we'll just drag and drop this into that group. And then this will be called um, fighter abilities. And then it will form a new group and actually get rid of this. Okay. So this is basically his abilities here, the things that he can do as a fighter. And now if I get out of the edit mode and I change this mode to combat and actions there we go he has his his uh, abilities and then he has some of his racial stuff so that would be done you know when you need to and then to to fix this uh, stat block here I'm gonna delete him off of there and re-add him because now that he has more stuff and then I need to put a name on him so Gundren rock seeker and then I'll put like level one so we know what's going on with Because they have rules for him for different levels. So that's not too bad for Sidekick. Uh, thanks to Enrius for suggesting. So that, that was a good idea. Just kind of a real basic warrior sidekick. Nothing too fancy. He's got a couple abilities that he can use. It's really supposed to be like between a level 0 and a level 1. So that's perfect. So that's uh, a really good idea and usage of that. So he doesn't really have any armor. But if he was, I would probably give him Weather. So, you know, he probably isn't wearing any, but if he did, I'd give him leather. And then as far as his gear goes, all he really needs is his mining equipment. So, was just starting to build that, so I kind of got off track. But I want to give him some a water skin, his basic stuff. And then some rations. I'm gonna give him two water skins. It's pretty much so he's got. Oh, I want some rope. Yeah, he's pretty much got his mining gear. I mean, he's got a pick and he's got a hammer and some pythons and some rope. Got a little bit of food and water. He has his gem, his traveling clothes, a chisel, which is good, and his backpack. So I don't think he needs a whole lot more. I mean, he's got a pouch. So I'm going to put the pythons in the pouch. So I'm going to type the word pouch next to that so we know where it's at. I'm going to put the rest of the stuff, or most of it, in his backpack. Let's see. The gem will be in his pouch. Chisel will be in his backpack. His clothes. The hammer will be in the backpack. So there we go. So it, Oh, and his food will be in his backpack too. So he doesn't have a whole bunch of stuff and he's able to carry more stuff if he needs to. So he's got, you know, just enough. So he's not a whole big whopping, you know, creature here, but at least he has some stuff. You can use him as a player, or you can use the NPC stat block. I think he's pretty good. I don't think he needs a whole lot more. Um, 
He has things that may or may not lend itself to an adventure, but at least he has something, and it's not totally, you know, blocked out where he can't can't defend himself. And uh, when I run the encounter with him and Sildar uh, fighting the goblins that are trying to capture them, that'll be a lot of fun. At least he'll have something to deal with. So those are those two. So Sildar is a third level fighter. Gundren is a level one sidekick warrior. And I think his two brothers are going to be similar, but each one of them are going to be slightly different for their builds. So I think that's all I'm going to do for today. Um, I have a little bit of his notes and backstory to go through. And that's about it. And his actions are set up. Uh, he doesn't have a log. I just got to finish up his personality traits and such. And if I remember right, the, the ones that came with uh, the NPCs... I might just use what they gave him because they seem to be pretty good. So I pull up the NPC and you go to the other tab. It talks about what he's into and, and those sort of things. And, you know, there's a link to his information and there's a link to the stat block and what his stats are as an NPC and all those things. So it's pretty cool. So that's just uh, his character traits. I may fail, but I never give up. So if I unlock that, well, I can't. I have to make a copy of it. So if I go to his stat block that I made, and then I go to other, there we go. So if I went in there and I go to his information, it should show what, you know, there's a picture of him supposedly. And then there's a link to his features, which, which is on the back of his sheet. And then there's a link to his information that comes off the other tab. So let me see what that. Yeah, so I'm going to have to make a copy of this. But it says I may fail, but I never give up. I don't risk my life for nothing. I expect reward at the end of the quest. I must reach my brothers at Lost Mine, whose location is marked on a map now in the possession of the goblins. And the flaw says I cannot sleep unless immersed in total darkness. That's pretty cool. I might use those. But anyway, so that's uh, the the end of Gundred for right now. So once I get him done, I'm going to build his two brothers. And then I'm going to start working on the goblins. And so it's going to take a little while to set this up. But uh, once it's done, it's going to be a lot of fun. But I have some guests on here that want to run the goblins. And we're going to actually play the goblins kind of like the good guys in a way. So maybe I'll build all the, the goblins as characters instead of... NPCs. We'll see. But uh, until next time, take care, everybody. Have a good weekend. Happy Easter. And we'll